The Avenger. The road to crime ends in a trap that justice sets. Crime does not pay. Avenger, sworn enemy of evil, is actually Jim Brandon, a famous biochemist. Through his numerous scientific experiments, Brandon has perfected two inventions to aid him in his crusade against crime as the Avenger. The telepathic indicator by which he is able to pick up thought flashes, and the secret diffusion capsule, which cloaks him in the black light of invisibility. Brandon's assistant, the beautiful Fern Collier, is the only one who shares his secrets, and knows that he is the man the underworld fears as the Avenger. And now... The Avenger and the Mystery of the Giant Brain. Who is it? Who's there? It's Miss St. Clair. I want to speak to you, Professor Rodano. Oh, all right, all right. Come in. Why, Miss St. Clair, where are you going with all that luggage? I'm leaving, Professor. Leaving? Yes. And you needn't pretend to be surprised. You know why I'm going. Oh, yes, you were upset about those animals from the zoo, I believe. Yes, that among other things. Miss St. Clair, it was absolutely necessary for me to have those animals. Our experiments have gone far beyond the stage of rabbits and mice. I must have animals of a little more cunning. Of course, I'm I'm sorry to have to steal them from the zoo and neighboring farms, but that's the only way. Well, I want no part of it. When I came here a year ago as your assistant, uh, I thought you were a reputable scientist. I am a great scientist, Miss St. Clair. Too great to allow the petty ethics of... Perhaps you are a great professor. But you've become cruel and inhuman. And the kind of man that has no place in in the laboratory. These experiments and brain surgery you're making now are horrible. You think so? Then perhaps you have decided to report me to the police. No. I just want to get out of here and have nothing further to do with you. You're a coward, Miss St. Clair. You're afraid of what the great Rodano can accomplish. Why Rodano's work is just beginning. Look, these three mechanical men. These robots I have created. They're only in their infancy. Yes, I know they are. Look at them lined up there. Three iron monsters, that's what they are. You hate them because you fear them. In time, my robots will accomplish all that man is too cowardly to attempt. Professor, please don't go on with this. Destroy them now before it's too late. Why, Miss St. Clair? How can you talk like that? You helped perfect them. I didn't understand what you were doing. You will excuse me if I find that hard to believe. It's true. Until a few weeks ago, these robots were merely harmless servants of your will. Created, you assured me, merely to fetch and carry for you. Now you send them out to capture animals for you, in the hope that in time you'll be able to create for them a brain. Exactly. And that time is almost at hand. Just think, Miss Sinclair. Very soon, I will no longer have to control those robots as I do now by the magnetoelectric batteries I have installed about the house. Ah, they will have a mind and intelligence all their own. You're playing with madness and death, Professor. Two marvelous experiments. Madness and death. I see that there's no point in trying to reason with you. But there is one other thing I'd like to do before I go. Yes? I'd like to know what has happened to Dr. Giles. I told you two weeks ago I sent him away on business. I don't believe you. 
I think he left you just as I'm doing because he wanted nothing further to do with you and your robots. Would you really like to know where Dr. Giles is now? Would you like to see him, Miss St. Clair? What do you mean? Dr. Giles is in my secret basement laboratory. I had to lock him up in a little iron cage down there. Come, I'll show you. No. No, you are mad. Uh, I'm going to the police. Robot one. Robot one. Stop, Miss St. Clair. Carry her to the basement laboratory, Robot One. No, no. You've always been curious about that secret laboratory, no. Miss St. Clair. Now I let you see it. No, no, no. I'm ready to dictate now. Let me see. This is experiment 2274, isn't it, Chief? That's right. Go ahead, Chief. Subject. A power increase on the telepathic indicator. Data. Increase of two amperes on direct current caused the headgear to blow. However, when current was changed to alternating, reception was not only maintained, but increased. Oh, Jim, you increased it. How wonderful. I don't know exactly how much yet, but I think it's a matter of a few miles, Fern. We'll send out a crew tomorrow, station them a quarter of a mile apart, and experiment with their thought transmissions. Good. I'll make all the arrangements. Now for the data on the strongest thought impressions I picked up on the indicator today. Now take this down, Fern. Thought waves received from a greater distance than before seem to have their origin in violence, but not death. Constant static interference might indicate that the thoughts were surrounded by electricity at their origin. That's something new, isn't it, Jim? Completely new, Fern. Add these facts, will you? Mm-hmm. The color impression was gray. Gray with a background of blue. Perhaps something gray in color, high enough to be seen against the background of the sky. Either a tower or a plane. But since there was no indication of movement, I'm inclined to favor the tower. Mm. Sounds as though we've picked up the latent thought waves of a medieval maiden in distress. Oh, there you go, letting your romantic notions run away with you again. Well, nothing seems to be impossible with that indicator. But if you'll review the facts, young lady, you'll realize that your medieval maiden could scarcely have been surrounded by electrical instruments of extremely high voltage. No, I suppose not. Unless the tower was struck by lightning. (laughs) I give up. You win. But to get back to the facts... Oh, make a note of this, please. I also picked up an impression on the same thought wavelength of inarticulate suffering. Something that could have emanated from small children or animals. This impression was not as clear as the others. That's a strange kind of impression. Yes, and all the more interesting in view of a story that appears in this morning's paper. Here, paste this clipping in beside those notes. What is it, Jim? It's a story about some animals that were stolen recently from the zoo at Midvale. Also, a raid on a fox farm near there. What do you make of it, Jim? Nothing yet. Fern, uh, do we have a legend map that includes Midvale? Well, we have one for this entire county. Will that do? Fine. Yeah, where is it? On the bottom shelf behind you. All right. Let me see. Uh, Midvale's exactly 16 miles due east from here. Yes, that's within the radius of the indicator. Oh, look, Jim. This footnote says that Midvale boasts of several mansions of great architectural beauty that date back to the early 1800s. It also boasts of several well-known silver fox farms, all of which ties in pretty well with the things we already know. Yeah. Fern, how long will it take you to pack? Fifteen minutes. All right, let's get moving. You and I are going on a little trip to Midvale. <laughs> How much farther do you think it is to Mr. Isaac's farm? Oh, well, we should be coming to it soon, Fern. Aren't you enjoying the walk? Yes, only it's farther than I expected. We must have walked at least two miles since we left Midvale. Well, it can't be far now. <coughs> Jim, why are you so anxious to talk with Mr. Iser? Because Joe Iser has reported four foxes stolen from his farm within two weeks. Oh. And I think he may be able to give us a few leads. Off the record, of course. Mm-hmm. Oh, that must be Iser's barn just ahead there. Oh. Somebody's shooting us, Jim. Fern! Run! Fern, wait! Wait, nobody's shooting at us. Those shots came from behind that barn. Come on. Oh, go ahead, Jim. I can't keep up. Look, there's a man running across the field. I'll stop him. Hey, hey, you. Wait a minute. Stop. Stop, I say. Oh, no. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Stop running or I'll bring you down. No. They say I killed him. But I didn't. I didn't. No, stop, I tell you. I didn't kill him. I didn't. Let me go. I didn't do it, I tell you. Now, take it easy. I didn't say you killed anybody. But I couldn't let you run away. Sorry I had to knock you down. 
I, I was in the barn. I saw it all. But I didn't kill him. Kill who? Joe Iser. We've oh, got him, Jim. Thank heaven. The big man did it. The big man. Come on, show us where Iser is. Come this way. Here. Back of the barn. Now, suppose you tell me exactly what you saw. Well, Joe caught the big man stealing two foxes. Joe shot him, hit him four times. But the bullets can't hurt the big man. What in the world is he talking about, Jim? Hang the I know, Fern. There he is. There's Joe Iser. See? He's dead. I'll have a look. Well, Jim? Yeah, he's dead, all right. And four bullets have been fired from this gun he's holding. We've got to call the police. No, no, don't call the police. They'll say I did it. They'll... Oh, I'm going home. Oh, no, you're not. You've got a lot of questions to answer. What's your name? Uh, Harry Sampler. Just what were you doing here, anyway? And who's this big man you're talking about? Well, I live around the hill there in the shack. I come over here every day to help Joe with the chores, and he gives me food. Yeah? Joe is good to me. I wouldn't kill him. So, today, while you were helping either, this big man appeared and stole two foxes? Yeah, that's right. Joe started to shoot at him, but the big man walked right through the bullets and hit Joe over the head with his big iron hand. He killed Joe. The big man did. Oh, this is getting us nowhere fast, Fern. I'm going to call the police. Well, I think we'd better. Come on, and show me where Isaac's telephone is, Harry. Well, uh, uh, Joe ain't got no phone. What are we going to do, Jim? Well, I've got to stay here and guard the place until the police get here. But how can we get word to them? Yeah, that's the question. I can't trust Harry to go. And it's getting too late for you to go alone. Well, if I hurry, Jim, maybe I can make it into town before dark. No, no, Fern. There's a killer loose around here somewhere. I think there's a phone over to the Gray Towers. But I wouldn't go in there. No? Where's Gray Towers? Uh, Right around the bend and up the road a piece. I'll go, Jim. I'm not afraid to go that far. All right. But before you go, take a look at these footprints, Fern. Oh, good heavens. They're monsters. Yeah, and there are at least five feet between the strides. Jim, do you think there could possibly be anything to this poor fellow's story? Well, it's fantastic, of course. But Isa was killed by a blow on the head, all right. He was struck by some kind of blunt instrument. Jim, I don't think we should trust this fellow. Harry, maybe he's not as harmless as he seems. After all, he could have... Don't worry, Fern. I'm not trusting him. I'll keep Harry right here with me until you get back. Now, you run along, but don't lose any time. I'll expect you back here in less than half an hour. Okay, Jim. So long. So long, Fern. Yeah, I'm sure they got a phone up to Gray Towers, but I wouldn't go in there. I'd be afraid. Seems to me you're afraid of just about everything, Harry. You'd be afraid of the big iron men, too, if you saw them. Well, all I've got to say is that somebody had better see them, Harry, or your goose is cooked. Even so, I'd prefer to have a better alibi for murder than an iron monster. to the Avenger and the mystery of the giant brain. Robot 2, open the door. Excuse me, may I... Oh, don't be frightened, my dear. This is just a mechanical man who acts as my servant. He's perfectly under control. Come in. Oh, no, no, thank you. Never mind. Seize her, Robot 2. No, let me go. 
Well done, Robot 2. Now close the door. Tell this monster to put me down, please. I just came to use the phone. You were sent to call the police, were you not? Oh, you don't understand. A man's been murdered. Well, perhaps you already knew that. A very unfortunate incident, but that sort of thing is inevitable sometimes. People are stupid. They don't understand the needs of science. Please let me go. I'm expected back in town. No, you are needed here. I'm needed here? What for? I need your brain for my great experiment. You arrived just in time. My brain? Yes. Now I'll have three. Three human brains. Bring her to the secret laboratory, (laughs) Robot 2. Oh, no. Put me down. Let me go. No use to struggle. The robot has his orders, and he will obey them. Oh, you are a murderer. You killed Isa. He was just a little man who got in my robot's way. But yours is to be a greater honor than mere death. You will sacrifice your living brain to the great god science. A mere mortal could ask no greater privilege. No! Let me go! Let me go! Let me go! Stand guard, Robot 3. I'll open the cage, Robot 2. You put the beautiful lady inside. Miss St. Clair, Dr. Giles, I've brought you company. Why have you brought this strange girl here, Rodano? To share the fate I have in store for you and Miss St. Clair, my uh, worthy doctor. What are you talking about, Professor? Just what do you intend to do with us? Be patient a little longer, Miss St. Clair. Come out and close the door, Robot 2. Now listen, all of you. Tonight, the mighty Rodano will perform the greatest operation in the history of surgery. I will add three human brains to the living animal brains I already have preserved. Wait, I'll show you. Remove the heavy cover from that table, Robot 2. Be careful not to break the glass case. Well, what do you think of it? What is that horrible thing? It's moving. Of course it's moving. It's alive. It's the composite living brain of 14 animals. It's the most horrible thing I've ever seen. Even my worst suspicions didn't prepare me for anything like... like this. Hold on, Miss St. Clair. We mustn't give up yet. Be silent and listen to me. Tonight, I add three human brains to this. And then, I'll place them all within a special robot I've constructed. Then, the world will see a real man of iron. A man of unlimited power and superlative wisdom. The great Rodano will be worshipped as the creator of a new race. Oh, stop him, stop him. I can't stand anymore. Professor. Yes, what is it, Dr. Giles? Perhaps we, Miss St. Clair and I, deserve whatever fate you have in store for us. Whether we meant to or not, we did help you create the robots. But this strange girl you've brought here, she had nothing to do with it. Let her go free. Yes, Professor. There's no need to make the innocent suffer, too. Ah, you two are coming. Yes, you know that if I set you free... The police will be here in five minutes. No, I tell you, I need you all. Science needs you. How much longer have we, then? One hour. One hour yet to live. Robot One will bring you a fine dinner of roasted duckling. We must observe the rules of death. Condemned should eat both well and heartily. Well, Harry, it was a lucky thing for us that truck happened by so we could get word to the police. The police come mighty fast, didn't they? Yes, and they want to question both of us later, Harry. I promised them we'd both come to police headquarters as soon as I find out what's happened to Fern. They don't think I did it, do they? No, and if you promise me you'll tell them exactly what you saw, I'll give you a reward of $10. $10? Gee, I never saw that much money. Oh, say, Harry, is that Gray Towers? Yeah, yeah, that's the place. That's where the professor and the big men live. Have you ever been inside the house, Harry? No, nobody's allowed inside. All the doors and windows has big bolts. How do you know if you were never inside? Well, sometimes I climb up in that tree over there by the garden and look in the window. What did you see from there, Harry? Well, that's how I first saw the big men. But nobody believed me. They said I made it up. Well, I guess there's nothing for it then but to try to get in by the front door. Come on, Harry. Oh, no, sir, not, not me. I I wouldn't go in there. The big men kill people. All right, you climb up in the tree then and wait for me. Sure, I'll wait. You said I'm going to get $10. That's right. I'll see you later. Uh, Yes, sir. Nobody will see me up in that tree. It's too dark up there. Well, Professor, you're going to have a visitor. 
When that door opens, the Avenger will step inside, and you'll be none the wiser because my diffusion capsule will render me invisible. The moment the door is open, I'll break the capsule and enter. What's that noise? Who's out there? Who's out there, I said? I'm sure I heard a peculiar noise just as the door opened. Who's there? Well, it must have gone away, whoever it was. Robot one, close the door and bolt it. Now follow me, Robot one. Follow me closely, for in just a few minutes, we begin our great experiment. Dr. Giles, the hour is almost up. Yes, just a few minutes more. Think of that, that maniac sending down all this food. As though any of us could touch it. Do you suppose that if we make all the noise we can, somebody might hear us? There's not a chance of that, Miss Collier. This basement is soundproof. Well, we certainly haven't anything to lose. We might as well try it. Here, each one take a tin cup, hit them against the bars as hard as you can. And everybody shout at the same time. We'll say, help, we're in the basement. Ready? Go. Help, we're in the basement! Help! We're in the basement! Listen! It's the robots. It's too late for any help now. Go ahead! Scream your heads off! No one can hear you! Stand guard, robots! I'm going to bring Dr. Giles out of the cage now. You kill him if he tries to get away. Come, Dr. Giles. Now place him on the steel table, robot two. I'll fasten his hands and feet. He won't feel anything. None of us will. The electricity will stun him instantly. It's the only way the brain can be removed and still remain alive. Oh, don't! Now stand aside, robots. There, in a line. That's right. Now you won't be in my way. Every split second counts in this operation. Now we're ready. I'll pull the switch and... No, you don't, Professor. Who spoke? Who's there? It's the Avenger, Professor. Oh, the Avenger. Oh, Miss St. Clair, we're saying... Why, I don't understand. Where is he? Where are you, Avenger. How did you get in here? You can't see me, but I'm here, Professor. Here to see that you're brought to justice. Find him, robot. Find the Avenger and kill him. Kill the Avenger. Find him, robot. Professor. Giles. Giles. The Avenger is here to ruin my experiment. Professor, set me free. I'll help you. Yes, Giles, you must help me. I'll set you free. There. 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 Help me, Giles. Help me find the Avenger. He must kill him. He mustn't ruin my experiment. Dr. Giles, be careful. The robots have broken the glass case to try and break it free. No, no, you robot fools. Look what you've done. The brain is moving toward the propulsion. Oh, no, robot, help me. Dr. Help Giles, robot. Dr. Giles, there's a robot behind you. Move to the corner. Where's the battery that controls these robots? It's over here. I think I can reach it. Giles, Giles, help me. Pull this monstrous brain away from me. He's <laughs> struggling here. Can, can you reach the battery, Giles? on the desk here somewhere. Here they are. Well, I never thought I'd get out of here alive. Well, neither did I. Is, uh, is the professor dead? Yes, the professor is dead. No one could save him from his own creation. The professor's giant brain was just a boomerang. Giles. Yes, Avenger? Call the police at once. And when they get here, demonstrate how these robots work. Otherwise, they'll never believe your story. Right.
Woodvale is one town I'm glad to leave behind me, Jim. I don't blame you, Fern. You had a pretty narrow escape last night. The Avengers saved Dr. Jaw's life by a mere second, Jim. I got there the first moment I could, Fern. When you didn't return to Weiser's place, I naturally became worried. But frankly, I never expected to find anything as fantastic as the professor and his giant brain. Well, we can't say Harry didn't try to warn us. Yes, he certainly did. And for once, the police and everyone else in Midvale will have to admit that the truth in this case was more fantastic than any story poor Harry ever dreamed of. Jim, what will happen to those robots now? Well, they're just so much scrap iron without those control batteries, and the police have confiscated those. What about the giant brain? What will happen to that? It's being removed to the state research laboratory, naturally. The brain is dead now. Within five minutes of being exposed to the air, it lost all its living properties. That would have been a great disappointment to the professor. I'm glad it's dead. It was the most horrible thing I ever saw. You know, Fern, at one time, Professor Rodano was a well-respected scientist. It's a shame that he went mad and used his genius in the wrong direction. He was mad, all right. Jim, Hmm. did you know that he sent us a delicious dinner of roast duckling last night just before he came down to kill us? No. (laughs) And I suppose the thing that's worrying you now is that you didn't eat it. Well, if I'd known how things were going to turn out, I could have done justice to that duckling. Well, don't you worry your pretty head about it, Fern. I'll take you to Carlo's for dinner tonight. Oh, wonderful. I'm sure Carlo's roast duckling is just as good as Rodano's. <laughs> and he doesn't reserve it for such special occasions. All characters, names, places, and plots used in the Avenger program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a thought. A thought. A thought. Remember, listen for another adventure of... The Avenger.